time of the month to share with you my favorite products for the month of June. We had some really good ones and some really surprising ones to me. So let's just go ahead and get started. Actually not a lot of complexion products this month that I fell in love with. So we're skipping foundation, concealer, all of that and going straight into these guys from Pat McGrath of course. After playing around I picked my favorite colors so I wanted to share with you guys. These were an easy two for me actually in my original review of these. I shared with you that these two were already my favorites and I can say after having a few more weeks playing with these these are still my first two favorite colors so we'll start off with the one that I am currently wearing right now and that is going to be the Venusian Sunrise now if you aren't as familiar with Pat McGrath she already has individual blushes out in her line but she came out with these limited edition blushes that are two separate shades in one now the only complaint I really have about these is I feel like it's almost impossible unless you're using a tiny brush who actually use just one shade you'll find that one brush will dip into the other shade so I often find myself just mixing them together or really being super careful which is kind of annoying if I only want one specific shade but nonetheless I still think they are really nice so the one I'm currently wearing is the Venusian Sunrise I have a mix of both on my cheeks right now I was looking for a cooler toned look and so what was important to me with these split pans is that they are different than what she has in her line already and I feel like these two Two, you get a good bang for your buck because you have a purple shade which is very unique and then you have a coral shade so if you do use a smaller brush and individually pick the color they look different from one another on the cheek which is really important and I also find that these colors are very unique I don't have a lot of colors like these in my collection what is really trendy is that really baby baby pink kind of look on the cheek that is cool tones that's cool tones are back in and this gives it to you so it gives you a trendy color and I do find it to be quite unique so I've been loving this one now one one that surprised me, I did not think I was going to love this, but it's probably my favorite and the most wearable for me. This is Paradise Glow, and I don't have a blush that's quite like this. Now, it looks a lot more brown on the website, whereas in person, it definitely has a lot of warmth, like almost like a deep red and then like a golden orange shade. This is beautiful on my skin tone for that kind of sunburnt warm look. I'm not as big of a fan of warm blushes on my cheeks, so when I find a good one, I tend to really like hang on to it, and this is just so beautiful. It's a very, very natural sun-kissed kind of look. Obviously, I could make it unnatural if I used a lot of the color, but the tone of it is very, very pretty. And even in my original review, which I did demo each of these on the cheeks, if you want to see them, there was a lot more colors that came out. Everybody loved this shade. So this is probably my most recommended. And I was worried because when I looked online, I thought that this shade would definitely be too dark on me. And it's one of my favorites. Okay, the last face product that I have is from House Labs. This month, she completely rebranded. Her line came out in Sephora. They're reformulated to be clean. And I think there were some hits and misses within the launch but the highlights are the must-have of the line if you ask me I think this and one other product are really really fabulous so these are called the bio radiant powder gel highlighters I'm currently wearing the shade peach quartz now these are not for the faint-hearted like these are very very blinding but they look really wet as opposed to like super glittery or shiny on the cheek they just look wet and hydrating on the cheek and I think they are so beautiful they're kind of like a baked formula so they don't get too messy and they just look so smooth over the cheeks so I have peach quartz and I also have sunstone there was a lot of shades and some really beautiful unique shades in the line definitely the number one thing I would say if you're looking in the complexion products like the bronzers the highlights the pigments and all of that for the cheeks you definitely have to go with the highlights these are so beautiful and high quality. I mean, these are luxury quality. When it came to the house lab stuff, because I know right now you can get the stuff very discounted from prior to the rebrand on Amazon, what I was looking for with this rebrand is what stands out compared to all of these other products at Sephora, and the highlights definitely did that. Okay, we're already moving on to the eyes. I have an eyebrow product. This is such a surprise. I have not had a Too Faced product in my favorites video in such a long time, and then not only that, I picked this up on a whim. Like I literally said in my haul when I picked this up, I don't know why I got this. 
but it's awesome. This is the Too Faced Fluff and Hold Laminating Brow Wax. It's like a more everyday version, I would say, of the Patrick Ta Laminating Brow Wax. I talked my trash on laminated eyebrows, never liked the way that they looked fluffy brows, all of that. I think I was just jealous that I couldn't do it. But now that I've found the products I can do it, I do it. I make my eyebrows look a little bit fluffier, though to a minimum, you know, they aren't shooting up towards the sky. But anyways, this does such a good job of separating the brow hairs and you can see they're fluffy. This formula does not feel like glue, but the eyebrows still do last all day. Like I said, it's more everyday lightweight version of the Patrick Ta, I would say. It's a really, really bomb brow wax if you need your brows to go in a specific direction. Yeah, this is super duper good to face scaled it randomly. Okay, let's move on to eyeshadows. So this month I'm actually not going to have an eyeshadow palette rankings video because I only tried three eyeshadow palettes this month. There wasn't that many launches, so I actually took that opportunity to use some of my older eyeshadow palettes, dig back into my collection, and also individual shadows. I used a lot of that as well. So yeah, no rankings this month, but I will share with you every single palette that I did try this month was awesome, but there there were two that are just mm, chef's kiss. So the first one is the one that I'm currently wearing. This was a shock to me. My expectations honestly were not too high for this. This is the Wayne Goss Luxury Eye Palette in the shade Smoky Quartz. So this is the newest eyeshadow palette to his line. I find his eyeshadow palettes to be pretty hit or miss, more often miss than hit if I'm being honest. But this is such a good one. So this is definitely for that easy, effortless 90s smoky eye. So you have to like cool tones to enjoy this palette. It also is kind of a turn off to me that you only get six shades because it is a pricier palette, but dang, this is so good. So the quality on this is perfection. The shades blend themselves. There's no patchiness or anything like that, which is something that I have struggled with in the past. And honestly, the formula and the ease of use, it really reminds me of the good Tom Ford formulation because I got this eye with little to no effort. Something to keep in mind, this glitter could be just a wee bit on the chunky side if you aren't into glitters but I think it's really pretty the longer that I've had this you know I've decided there's not as much versatility as I originally thought because every time I wear this I'm getting a smoky 90s cool toned kind of eye but if that's the kind of look that I'm going for because it is a look that I'm loving this is really really great I've noticed uh, like Kim Kardashian ever since she went bleach blonde she's rocking a lot of those 90s gray cooler toned looks and I feel like you can get that look with this palette the quality on it is is really great. I really have nothing bad to say about this palette. If you like the look that I'm wearing now, I think you will really enjoy this palette. Oh, which reminds me to tell you how I got this look today. So it is very, very simple. I started off with this cream shade, which is a really great asset to this palette. You can use it for so many things. And I just use that to blend out underneath my brow, kind of brighten up that area. Then I went in with this shade, which is definitely going to end up being used the most out of all of the shades in this palette because this is the perfect transition color. And then I went in with this shade because this is a shade that I was worried about initially when this launched that it could be a little bit patchy or difficult to blend. And as you can see in the demonstration here, that's not the case. Blend it really beautifully. Use that in the outer corner just to add some extra depth. And then I went in with this shade. So this is a kind of a more satiny shade right here. And I used it in my original review as a crease shade to add depth. But today I wanted to try it all over the lid and it is very, very nice. It is more of a satin shade so you're not not gonna get a lot of reflection on it but it blended out beautiful all over the eyelid and it's that perfect tone to complete a 90s eye you could use that all over the lid and the crease and get an effortless two second smoky eye and then because I can't help myself, if I use this palette, I'm always going to use the shade. I used the glitter shade, didn't wet my finger, didn't wet the shade, just went in with a finger in the pan and then applied it straight to my eyelid and just let the glitters kind of do their work on my eyelid. So like I said, in certain occasions, I think that this might be a little bit chunky for some of you, but I love it. I think it's gorgeous. This palette is awesome. I'm also going to talk about while I'm here, the Essential Eye Cool pencil that also came out with this palette is also very very nice. I've always liked Wayne Goss's eye pencils. I feel like they're very good price. His lip liners are also really great. So the new shade that came out with Granite is a really dark gray shade. So I'm excited about this because I don't have an eyeliner pencil that's a shade and it really does complement this eyeshadow palette as well. So if you're interested in the kind of look that I'm wearing, I do suggest buying both of these in a set because I mean, I don't know, I just don't have an eyeliner that's a shade. This is really good quality. It lasts a long time. There's a ton of tug 
to this pencil so just be aware of that it's not going to glide across the eyelid like some eyeliners that we're used to but I think that tug helps the longevity and the transfer of this which is really important on mature eyelids which is his target audience so yeah this is a really really nice quality very fair priced eye pencil I've also been enjoying just as much okay like I knew that this was gonna be in this video and you probably did too if you watched any of my videos recently the ABH Nouveau palette came out this month and they killed it I just feel like this is the new era of ABH I hope they keep it up they've taken what they were what they were known for their style of eyeshadows and elevated it to for 2022 to be more modern and I absolutely love this eyeshadow palette the quality on it is 10 out of 10 the color story is 10 out of 10 I have nothing bad to say about this now surprisingly I've gotten a lot Lot of comments about the shades that are not intended for eye use so I'm going to answer that question this is a common practice in the United States if you have accumulated somewhat of an eyeshadow palette collection I guarantee you there are palettes in your collection that also have the same warnings that this ABH palette does so check the back you'll see in the bottom like palettes won't advertise themselves as eyeshadow palettes they're just like shadow palettes and there will normally be a disclaimer at the bottom telling you some shades are not intended for use around the eye area. I don't think it's anything to be majorly concerned about unless you have extremely sensitive eyes. So basically in the US, some ingredients are technically not deemed eye safe by the FDA, but they are in other countries. Anyways, I would say, and don't sue me, because there is a chance that you could have sensitivities, but there is a 90, like, 6% chance that you will be fine, especially if you already have a lot of eyeshadow palettes. I'm sure you'll be fine as long as your eyes aren't really sensitive and a lot of times it also just means that it might stain your eyes. But with these shades in here, I mean, I've used all of the not intended for eye area shades, nothing happens. It's fine. I know some of you do choose to stay away from them, so just be aware that three shades are not deemed eye safe. But if it's anything you're majorly concerned about, you know, do a patch test, something like that. Most people will be fine. <laughs> Anyways, so this is not a palette, but remember how I told you earlier that I took advantage of there not being a lot of palette launches to use some individual shadows as well. I was going to pop this in a giveaway from ColourPop. I ended up using some of these and I'm obsessed with this little set. So this is from ColourPop. This is the Thanks a Bunch Super Shock Shadow Trio. This came out in a new apricot collection and these have some of the most beautiful golden orangey shades for summer. I've worn a couple of these in videos. You guys have been like, what's on your eyelid? one of these and one of these alone these have the prettiest finish to them they're very very reflective and they're gorgeous for that one and done look this summer uh i mean we all know how great ColourPop super shock shadows are they've been popular for years but i think we've kind of forgotten about them so i pulled this out and yes the super shock shadows continue to be amazing and this set is so so pretty i've been reaching for these a lot when i just want to get something really pretty on my lid a little bit mini baby wing and some mascara great for every day super easy and quick to use and so so stunning i do have another eyeliner that i wanted to talk about but i've already talked about this i put this in like the best of 2022 the jones road the best pencil it really is the best pencil i love this brown shade it reminds me a lot of an eyeshadow with the ease of use of this just like in a pencil form comparing it to the wing gloss which i talked about earlier the wing gloss is more creamy whereas this one is definitely like more powdery it has a drier finish to it so it actually glides across the eyelid super easy as well in a different way than a cream one like it glides almost like a powder and i, I just i need more eye pencils like this i'm really looking forward to picking up more of these because she has some really cool shades as well just like different like still wearable but like a hunter green how lovely does that sound i have it in brown i love it these last a long time they don't budge they hold their color really one of the best pencils so i feel like i've been using this almost every day so i feel like i've had this for way more than a month but no it's only been a month and i love it 
Okay, so to finish off this video, I have three lip products. I am wearing one right now, but you, I have demos because they're all quite bright. So I have really been enjoying this product from Jones Road as well. This is the lip tint in the shade Pretty Jolie is what I have. So this is one of my favorite color products from Jones Road. It's a very buildable formulation, so you can get a sheer wash of color with this, or you can build it up to get a nice pretty pop on the lips. So it's gorgeous on the lips, super comfortable, hydrating, great to keep in your purse. You can get a light wash of color just to brighten up the face or you can build it up for something that's really, really bright. It's not super long wearing because it is more hydrating but it's great to keep in your purse for that reason. But this is actually my favorite blush, if you will, from the Jodes Road line. I think I had two other products that were made specifically for a cheek color. Didn't love them that much. This is my favorite to use as a blush. It blends so easily, so I'll just pop a little bit on my cheeks and then a little bit on my lips. So I find this product to be extremely versatile, and it really is a hit from Jodes Road, if you ask me. And then I have two lip oils to talk about. They're very different. So I actually love the House Labs lip oil. This is the other product that you need to buy alongside the highlights if you're interested in the brand. So I picked up the shade Tint and it kind of has a very natural pinky tone to the lips which looks really pretty on those no makeup makeup days. It's a lighter feeling lip oil so it's not too thick. It feels really comfortable for every day and I love almost a little bit of a stain it leaves behind on your lips. It's a very subtle popsicle kind of look to the lips. I don't know, it, it gives you a run for its money. I really like the House Labs lip oil. I'm interested in trying the orange shade because I think I would enjoy that a lot. I don't know, it's a solid lip oil. I've been using it almost every day. Perfect for no makeup makeup days. The other lip oil that I have is from Fenty Skin. This is the Cherry Tree Conditioning Lip Oil. So this is a little bit more hydrating than the House Labs. Like House Labs is something that I would wear for every day for more of the color. This I'm wearing for actually conditioning the lips. It has a delicious cherry scent, which might turn some of you off. The fragrance in here is really strong, but I personally really enjoy that. And this has less of a color than the House Labs. The House Labs, like I said, almost leaves a popsicle lip stain kind of effect to the lips. This is purely for hydration with a little bit of color, like the tiniest little hint. Like I'm basically using it today as a clear lip gloss. It doesn't do too much color-wise. The consistency of it is also a little bit thicker than House Labs, which is why I think the House Labs is great for everyday wear. Uh, I mean, not that the Fenty is not. It's also great for everyday wear. But the House Labs, I would say, is more everyday friendly. But this really does hydrate the lips. It's a beautiful consistency. It really plumps the lips as well because it goes over the fine lines on the lips and kind of smooths them out, giving a more plump effect to the lips. I don't know. This did get sent to me. I wasn't going to buy it myself, but I'm, I'm glad I discovered it because it is so awesome, so hydrating. A really, really solid lip oil formulation. That wraps it up for makeup. Let's finish up with my purse of the month. I almost didn't pick this guy up, but boy, am I glad I did. This is from Kate Spade. It is a double zipper purse. Last I checked, they were all out of stock except for a black shade. So if they have it, I will link it down below. I got it from one of Kate Spade's deal of the days for $59. I post those every anytime there's a purse that I think is really cute. You'll see a post from me, but that's how I picked it up. I don't have a lot of white purses, so I seize the opportunity, but this is really, really functional because of the two separate zippers. So I find I use it a lot, and because it's not too dressy of a purse, it's actually quite casual, which is how I walk around a lot here, just to throw on. You know, I want a purse that's like cute, but not too dressy. This is perfect. And one of the selling points for me was it does have a removable strap, because sometimes I like to change my straps around. I've been loving this. This has been one of my most used purses. It's really great cute casual and I will link it if you are still able to get it. That's all I have for this month's favorites for the month of June. Let me know your favorite products down below and if you're curious about the worst of for the month I will be posting that on my TikTok and Instagram as well. That's one of my favorite short form videos to do so yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for liking and being subscribed to my channel. I will have everything else that I'm wearing on my face linked down below also and yeah I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys have a good one. Oh,